The following is a lecture entitled Self-Realization, given by His Grace Sriman Sankarshanda Sadhikari, recorded on May 15th, 2009, in Burgas, Bulgaria. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending this program of the Hare Krishna Movement. We have asked you to come here tonight because we want to introduce to you the most sublime wisdom. <clears throat> this wisdom is so sublime that it will free you from all anxieties. You will live a life completely free from fear. You become completely blissful, totally ecstatic, absolutely enlivened in all times, all places and all circumstances. Simply it requires you properly understand and properly practice this secret science known as bhakti. It is not difficult to master this bhakti science. You simply have to execute it under expert guidance, that's all. Just like if you want to make banana cake, it is not difficult to do it expertly. You simply require a good recipe and you must carefully follow the recipe. It is that simple thing. And then you will get very nice banana cake. So we are going to teach you the formula how to make your whole life like wonderful banana cake. Where every moment is like eating a most delicious banana cake, you see. Uh, we're going to give you the recipe tonight. And we're going to tell you how to follow that recipe. And if you will follow our instructions, you will become one of the happiest people on this planet. That is a fact. <clears throat> I am not joking. I'm talking very seriously. Just because I'm feeling so ecstatic doesn't mean that I'm not serious. <laughs> I can tell you, because of this process, which I've been practicing now for 38 years, I feel absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> and that's why I'm traveling all over the world. Because I want you to feel absolutely ecstatic too. There's one thing I hate. You know what that is? I hate to see people miserable. There's no reason for anybody on this planet to be miserable. Everybody can be swimming in an ocean of bliss at every minute. It is simply due to ignorance that people are suffering, that's all. My spiritual master is Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada has taught me this science of bhakti. You know how much he charged me? Zero. 
He gave me this knowledge absolutely free. And he ordered me, I must freely give it to you. If I were to charge money for this knowledge, I could be a millionaire overnight. Because this is the most valuable knowledge anywhere in the world. But I know that you can't afford to pay a thousand dollars for tonight's lecture. So I'm giving it to you for free. <laughs> Actually, this lecture is worth a thousand dollars per head. At least a thousand dollars per head. <laughs> But I'm giving it to you absolutely free. <laughs> Because I love you. I want you to be happy. It's as simple as that. You cannot give the rage for the master. Huh? You cannot give any kind of price for the... It simply gives the idea. Maharaji says there can be no price tag on this lecture. Even if we charge you one million dollars, it would not be sufficient for the value of this lecture. Even if we charge you all the money available on this planet Earth and all the countries of the world, it still would not be sufficient. So no one can afford, even Bill Gates could not afford this lecture. So we have no choice but to make it free of charge for you. <laughs> so, what is this amazing science of bhakti? The first thing you have to understand is who are you? Are you that body? Is it? We normally think I'm the body, you see. We think I'm a man. I'm a woman. You see? We think in terms of the body. I'm a little kid. I'm an old senior citizen. I'm I'm white, I'm black, I'm Bulgarian. I'm American. Is he? We think in terms of this body. But you know what that body actually is? It is simply a costume of an actor on the stage. It's simply a costume that you're wearing right now in this act of the play. This is not the same body you had when you were a little baby. Because the body is changing at every minute. At every minute, the old blood corpuscles are dying off and the new blood corpuscles are taking their place. <clears throat> Krishna confirms this in the Bhagavad Gita. Dehi no spinyata dehe Komaram jovanam jada Tata de hantara praptir Didas tatra namhu yati Chapter number 2 Text number 13 He says, As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, And the soul similarly passes into another body at the time of death. The self-realized souls are now devoted by such a change. So that is the first lesson. Do not be bewildered by the change of bodies. 
Don't think, oh, now I'm getting old and my life is over. <coughs> you are eternal. You are simply changing costume, that's all. When this body is finished, you will get another body. And we will teach you tonight how to get a better body than the one you have now. Why trade in a rotting body for another rotting body? Why not trade this body in for a body that never gets old, never gets sick, and never dies? You see, we have been caught up in the cycle of birth and death for millions and millions of births. It's described in the Vishnu Purana. Jalajanava Lakshani Stavala Lakshavinshati Kramaya Ruddha Sankhya Ka Pakshinom Dasha Lakshanam Trinshalakshani Pashavaha Chatur Lakshani Manushaha That there are 8,400,000 different species of life. There are 900,000 different types of aquatics. Two million types of plants and trees. One point one million types of worms and reptiles. In this way, all the species are enumerated in the Vishnu Purana. So we've been changing body after body after body after body after body for millions and millions of lifetimes. But in each and every body we had to get sick, we had to get old and we had to die. But the science I am teaching you tonight will teach you how to not take birth again in another material body. This technique will guarantee Punar Janmana Vijate that you will not take birth again. That you will enter into the spiritual world at the time of death. Where life is eternal, full of knowledge, and absolutely ecstatic at every minute. And the amazing beauty of this process is this. You don't have to wait for death to enter into that world. You can enter into that world right now. Even while you're situated in your present body. All you have to do is take advantage of the mantra. If you will chant the mantra with faith and devotion, this mantra like an airplane which is much better than Bulgarian air. I just flew on Bulgarian air this morning. And tonight I just flew on the the on Hare Krishna Airlines. And I can tell you that Hare Krishna Airlines is much better than Bulgarian Air. <laughs> Bulgarian Air will take you to you know to London, to Moscow, to Varna, to Burgas. But this Hare Krishna Airlines will take you all the way to the spiritual world. Any time that Sophia is bringing you down, any time that Sophia is bringing you down, you understand? Any time that Sophia is making you feel bad, you see. 
You just have to hop on this airplane and take off into the spiritual sky. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And if you will learn the science of bhakti, you can stay in that sky 24 hours a day. Even while you go about your normal daily activities here in Sofia, you become a transcendental personality, a spiritually enlightened being, who although doing their worldly duties in a very expert way, is simultaneously situated in the spiritual sky. This is mystical. And this is real. You can be living in this dimension at every minute. You simply have to learn from the bona fide spiritual master. And the advanced devotees, how to enter into this consciousness, and how to always remain in this consciousness. You have to give up sinful activities. That's why very few people will actually do this. They're too attached to their sinful activities. But those who have actually tasted this bliss of Krishna consciousness, they can easily give up all sinful activities. Because whatever pleasure they got from those sinful activities is nothing compared to the bliss they get from Krishna consciousness. I mean, aren't we pleasure seekers by nature? Is there anybody here who's not a pleasure seeker? Let's admit it. We're all pleasure seekers. So, an intelligent pleasure seeker, he's going to do whatever gives him the most pleasure, isn't it? That's why someone who's Krishna conscious can easily give up all types of sinful activities because they're getting millions of times more pleasure from Krishna consciousness than they did from any type of sinful activities. Okay, now comes the heavy part of the lecture. What are the sinful activities we give up? Now we're going to cut into your material attachments. It's going to be a little painful. So just uh, hear carefully and try not to be disturbed. Because this this chanting will give you, I promise you, it will give you so much more pleasure than you get from any of these activities. It may seem artificial to give them up, but once you get a taste of Krishna consciousness, you'll want to give them up. So what is the first thing we give up? It's based on compassion. Let me ask you this question. Would you eat your little brother? Or your little sister? What if they are mentally retarded? Would it be okay to eat your little brother or little sister? No, of course not. That idea is preposterous. 
So we have many, many little brothers and sisters who are mentally retarded compared to us. They are called the animal kingdom. So that is one of the very first principles. We give up meat eating. We don't eat the cow, we don't eat the chicken or the fish or the pig or the lamb or the snake. <laughs> now in China, they're, they like to eat snake and dog also. Who would think of in Bulgaria of eating a dog? No one would want to eat a dog here in, in Bulgaria. So, in the same way, they why? Because the dog is our best friend, isn't it? <laughs> the dog is very dear, you see. So who would want to eat a dog? You see. So the cow is even a better friend than the dog. She gives us milk, yogurt, cheese, sour cream, whipped cream, ice cream. So many wonderful things the cow gives us. Actually, we our first mother gives us her breast milk. And then, after a few months, we stop taking our mother's breast milk and we take the breast milk of the cow. She is our mother then. So, what kind of culture is it that wants to eat their mother? It's crazy culture. Mother eating culture. So the first thing we do, we stop eating our mother, you see. We do not kill the cow and eat. We take her milk and we offer that to the Lord. And when she is too old to give us milk, then we give her a very nice retirement program. To thank her for all the loving service she has given by her milk. You see. So especially this cow killing, it is most sinful thing. But we are kind upon all the animals. And we don't take any intoxications either, like cigarettes or coffee, tea or alcohol. Because these things cloud our consciousness. Mm. Why do you need liquor to get high when you can chant Hare Krishna and get high? We also don't waste our money on gambling, on lottery or casino. Gambling means you throw your money away, that's all. Spend that money in the service of God. That is a sure bet. <laughs> and the last thing is, we give up illicit sex. Why? Because sex is based on the concept of the body. I am male. You are female. Okay, let's enjoy. You see? This is the bodily concept. But one who realizes they are not the body. This male-female business, it is not very interesting. Because it brings the consciousness back down to the carnal level. When you realize you're not your body, then you can have a loving relationship with God at every minute.
And that loving relationship with God is more wonderful than any sex pleasure you could ever have. So we don't give up sex completely. We simply give up the illegal sex, the illicit sex. We utilize sex for what God made it for. What is that? Babies. Sex means for babies. That's what sex is for. If you want baby, you can have sex. If you don't want baby, give up sex. Simple thing. This is called natural birth control. So in this way, we follow these principles. Not like shackles, but these are regulated principles of freedom from all anxieties. And we take our pleasure in diving deep into that sweet ocean of the holy names of God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, to practice this process, you should every day chant Hare Krishna, get some beads, the devotees will give you some chanting beads. If you ask them for chanting beads, they will give you chanting beads and show you how to chant on the beads. And before you eat, offer your vegetarian food to God. <coughs> by eating that food which has been offered to God, you become sanctified by your eating. And then you should every day, instead of reading the newspaper or looking at the news on television, you can read the greatest news of all, Bhagavad Gita. In this way you become very happy and satisfied. So read the scripture, chant the names of God, give up sinful activities, and bow down before the Lord. If you will do these things under the guidance of the spiritual master and senior devotees, then I can guarantee you this will be your last life in this material world. I can promise you very soon you will see God face to face, eye to eye. So now I can ask if there's any questions. We know, we know that Shiva Prabhupada came uh, into America uh, at the time when the hippie movement was prominent and uh, you, you were also there at that time and uh, his question is uh, what, uh, what made you uh, what made the transformation within you uh, what was this feature of Krishna consciousness which uh, 
attracted to you and you need to transform it in. Prabhupada's mercy. There's nothing like it anywhere in the material world. Inconceivable mercy. I wanted that mercy. As much of it as I could get. And the only way to get that was to surrender. Yasham prashadahad bhagavat prashado Yasha prashada nagati kutopi By the mercy of the spiritual master, may one make spiritual progress and without his mercy, nobody can make any advancement. So how do you get the mercy of the spiritual master? Inasmuch as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So the more you surrender to the spiritual master, the more you get his mercy. How much Guru Prashad do you want? That will you get according to your degree of surrender. Questions next. How to be enthusiastic, how to increase our enthusiasm while performing devotional activities. Hmm. How to be enthusiastic and increase enthusiasm. Well, I can tell you my secret of how I've always been enthusiastic. For the last 13 and 38 years. Yeah. When I first joined, I was associating with a very, very enthusiastic devotee. His name was uh, Vishnu Janaswami. He, being with him was like being at a festival 24 hours a day. Because he was always thinking how to spread this movement to all the following conditions. So, so when I got my initiation, Prabhupada was in London, was not there, he was overseas. So as you know, at the time of initiation, you give Guru Dakshina to the spiritual master. You, you collect some donations and you give that to the spiritual man. So Prabhupada was not there in Austin for me to give him the dakshina. I had to mail him a letter. So I was thinking, here's a very good opportunity. I can write Prabhupada a letter now. Oh, a very good opportunity. So I told my beloved Srila Prabhupada that I am, uh, I want to spread this Krishna Gandhi's movement. And he wrote me back very nicely. He said, I can see that you're a very sincere, enthusiastic boy, eager to spread this Krishna Gandhi's movement. And then he gave me a, an order. He said, continue enthusiastically as you are doing and surely Krishna will bless you. So I decided I would take advantage of that order. 
and get more and 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 more blessings from Krishna. So I've been following that order now ever since I got that letter in 1971. And I'm feeling how I'm getting more and more and more blessings from Krishna. Because my guru promised me that my being enthusiastic would attract the mercy of Krishna. So on the order of my spiritual master, with his hint, mercy, I have always been enthusiastic. About Krishna consciousness, about the Krishna consciousness movement, and about expanding this movement to engulf the entire planet in the tidal wave of Krishna consciousness. So, I am ordering you also. You are my disciple. My order to you is that you should continue enthusiastic. I saw how enthusiastic you were at the airport the other day when you greeted us. So, you kindly maintain and increase this enthusiasm. <clears throat> Throughout your entire life, And I can absolutely guarantee you that surely Krishna will bless you. Next question. Is there a minimum level that one should achieve in order to spread this moment? Yes. Faith. You must have faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If you have that faith, then you can push forward this movement. Do you have that faith? Yes, then you must take that faith and share it with the world. Everyone you meet, you tell them that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That they should surrender to Him. Let's make a revolution here in Bulgaria. That everyone in Bulgaria must become Krishna conscious. You should push for that revolution here. Next question. He has a colleague, military man, and he saw him once uh, eating meat, drinking, and simultaneously speaking very enthusiastically about Krishna. So he's asking how to, what to make out of it, how to perceive this situation. His colleague was, was eating meat drinking. and glorifying Krishna? Yes, and glorifying yeah. Krishna. Well, you know what Prabhupada said about the drunkard drinking the wine. <laughs> Prabhupada said that the Raso Homa Psukontaya. Krishna says, I am the taste of all liquid things. 
So he said, if the drunkard thinks the taste of the wine is Krishna, he becomes the greatest yogi. So, let him continue to glorify Krishna. Whatever nonsense he may do, you encourage him to continue glorifying Krishna. And by that glorification, he'll become the greatest devotee of the world. There is a difference between someone who knows the process and knowingly violates it. And someone who is just, who's always who's, who's completely caught up in sinful life and starts to add Krishna. There's a difference. Let him translate. Wait. Baba gives the example of the drunkard becomes the greatest yogi by drinking the wine and thinking that it's Krishna. Wait, let him translate. You have to be patient. Let the translations happen and then you speak. Go ahead. No, I don't. I'm not saying to encourage them to keep eating. He encouraged them to keep talking about Krishna. That's what I said. I never said to encourage them in the eating meat. You encourage him to keep glorifying Krishna. Vishya vinivartante nirahara shadehina lashavarsang rishopya sha parang drishtani varatate. The embodied soul may be restricted from 259. The embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, though the taste for sense objects remains. But ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, he becomes fixed in consciousness. So, Prabhupada said, first make them Krishna conscious and gradually introduce rules and regulations. In fact, you may be shocked to hear this. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta told his disciples, this is probably when they came to the UK, I don't know the, where the place, but he told them to attract people to hear about Krishna, they could serve meat. Do you know that? But our prasadam is so attractive, we don't have to do them. Actually, vegetarianism is becoming very popular now. People know this meat eating is not a very healthy thing. They know it's bad for the environment. There is a city now in Belgium called Ghent. In that city, the government has mandated, mandated one vegetarian day every week. All the government officers, they will be a vegetarian once every week. All the all the government officers in that city will go vegetarian once a week. And they will introduce it in the schools also. And they're encouraging everybody in the whole city to be vegetarian once a week. And 
because veget because the carbon footprint of meat eating is very very bad. The environmental impact of meat eating is very 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 destructive upon the environment. In other words, a vegetarian diet is environmentally friendly. So, it's becoming more and more popular now. Everyone's worried about global warming. By being vegetarian, you will help to hold off global warming. You'll save money also. You'll be more healthy. And you'll be able to offer your food to Krishna before eating. You can't offer him meat. He won't take it. God is a vegetarian. So if you want to offer your food to him before you eat it, you have to be a vegetarian. So are there any less questions? Yeah. Or when we are Sankirtan, sometimes we meet pe people and we are talking to them, we are explaining about something about vegetarianism, you know, we have some vegetarian cookbook, and we are talking about yoga and these things, that we are doing yoga. And some of, some of the people, they say that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, in fact, uh, very soon we are also going to, to become veg vegetarian and uh, maybe even yogis. Because uh, we don't have uh, money to buy meat, and uh, very soon we are going to become very skinny, like a yogis, looking like a yogis. Because but tell them if you come to eat our Krishna yoga food, you'll be nice and plump. I'll tell them what I said. Okay, there's a question over here. That's the question. Uh, he, he says that in his personal life, in Krishna consciousness, uh, he has made many mistakes and he has, has many uh, wrong conceptions about Krishna consciousness. And his question is, is it possible to to remove these wrong conceptions and to start a new? Uh, yes. <coughs> Next question. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking to ask uh, something about the, uh, because you spoke about uh, the four principles, and uh, 
uh, regarding this, uh, is, is it that uh, uh, is it that this is just the the beginning, the beginning uh, base uh, of uh, what uh, should the devotees uh, follow? But uh, ultimately, uh, they have every devotee must give uh, give up mu much more, must must give up all selfish desires, all egoistic desires, and all desires for enjoyment, for personal enjoyment, in order to, to continue successfully and to, to, to get this uh, spiritual taste and to advance more and more in the spiritual life. Not translated for me. Yes, Krishna consciousness means pure selflessness. When we begin, we are completely, when we, in material consciousness, we are completely self centered. And we realize this self-centeredness is causing me miserable misery. We take to the path of Krishna consciousness. And as you become more Krishna conscious or more more God-centered, you naturally become less self-centered. If you are 2% Krishna conscious, you are 98% self-centered. <coughs> if you are 40% Krishna conscious, you are 60% self-centered. So the idea is that the more you increase your Krishna consciousness, the more you become God-centered. Your self-centeredness will gradually dwindle into nothing. And you will reach that stage when you have no desire except to please Krishna with your every thought, word, and deed. That's the platform of pure bliss. To whatever degree we are still self-centered, to that degree we must suffer. So the intelligent person realizes my self-centeredness is causing me to suffer, therefore let me get rid of it as soon as possible. Yes. In Krishna consciousness, there are services that we, we like to do, like <coughs> eating prasad or <coughs> distributing books or uh, offering puja. And there are some other services we do not like to do. Does it mean to, uh, in order to be selfless that we, we have to to do the services that we don't like to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the best thing is, the best way to advance is find those services you don't like and do them. Until you learn to like them. And keep looking for services you don't like and do those services. 
So there's nothing that you don't like to do for Krishna. If you always try to manipulate yourself to do only those things you like to do for Krishna, then you won't advance very quickly. So whatever you don't like to do for Krishna, do that for Krishna. <coughs> as much as possible. That is one of the insider secrets for rapid advancement. <coughs> One of them. There are many. I have many inside. I could write a whole book called The Insider's Secret Advancement in Krishna Consciousness. And there are many of them. And that is one of them. This one was this one was very enlightening for him. Mm. Enlightening? Yes. Yeah. So now you follow that. You're feeling enlightened by hearing about that concept. <laughs> now if you will do it, you will be a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, a million times even more enlightened by doing it. I'm starting from this. He's starting from tonight. Very good. Thank you very much. Stop now. Kids are getting restless. All right, that means we can stop now and Prashad. Are we going to give one last chance? All right, we'll give him. This is the last question, then. Go ahead. Not, it's not a question. He wants to... Alright, then we'll save it for next time. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sankashar Prabhu Ki Jai.